In this video, I'm going to be showing you one of the easiest ways on how you can set up AI assistance within tools that you're already using, whether it's Slack, Discord, Teams, or HubSpot. I'm going to be showing you how you can leverage frontier models, whether it's from OpenAI, Claude, Gemini, or Perplexity, and how you can build out workflows as well as custom integrations that you, as well as your team can leverage. To get started, you'll have a screen that looks just like this, and you'll be able to run through the onboarding flow. So this is going to be the easiest implementation to show you how to get started with RunBear with one of their custom examples. Now, in this video, I'm going to walk through how you can set up your own custom assistance, as well as demonstrate some of the capabilities. To give you a quick overview of the platform, there is the assistance tab. Now, this is going to be primarily where you're going to do a lot of the work. But for the integrations themselves, you can integrate things like Slack, Notion. And what's great with this is let's say you have a Kanban board on Notion, for instance, you could reference that as a source of data. Alternatively, if you want to leverage, say, a folder of documents that you have on Google Drive, you can do that as well. There's a number of different integrations here. And then in terms of the channels that you can actually interact with RunBear on, you can use, like I mentioned, Discord, Teams, HubSpot, Zendesk as well as things like Slack to actually integrate with the AI assistant. The other thing that I do want to mention is they have a great section on a number of different use cases. Say if you're within marketing, you can see those use cases. If you want productivity use cases, there's quite a few of those as well. There's detailed instructions, including videos, as well as really comprehensive documentation on how you can get started with all of this. The first thing that you're going to have to do is you're going to have to set up an integration. Let's say, for instance, you want to set this up within Discord. What you can do is you can determine the server that you want to have this connected to. In this case, let's just say I'm going to connect it to the Discord server that I have. You can walk through the steps, authorize the permissions for you to be able to access your Discord as well as the messages. And then once it's there, all that you need to do is you can click add and then there you go. So you have a new integration where now you can leverage those assistants. And in a number of cases, you very well could be leveraging a number of different integrations. Like for instance, it wouldn't be uncommon to see that you have potentially even all of these integrations within a workplace, or you could maybe have two or three of them. You might have Slack for your internal communications, and then you also have something like Discord for your external and community and stuff like that. Being able to integrate these assistants across platforms can be very handy. Once you have at least one integration set up, what you can do is you can go through and set up your assistant. Well, in this example, I'm going to be using the OpenAI assistant. But the nice thing with how this is set up is you can just go and reach for your API key, whether it's on Perplexity, Anthropic, or Gemini and it will directly route all of the queries through your pre-existing account. This can be really helpful in terms of saving costs, because frankly speaking, there are a lot of platforms out there where they do charge oftentimes a pretty hefty premium to even just wrap the request to something like Claude or Gemini or what have you. What we can do here is I'm just going to go back to the OpenAI Assistant. I'm going to give it a title of YouTube Assistant 2.0. Now, the nice thing with this is what you can do is if you click the Craft with Chatbot button, it can route you to the custom RunBear assistant. So in this case, I want to specify that I want something that can help with YouTube in a number of different areas. I want something that can research. I want something that can help with post-production, maybe make descriptions, give me titles, ideas. So in this case, I'm going to say you are an assistant to help with my YouTube channel. You perform research, generate titles, descriptions thumbnail photos, as well as general information related to my channel, Developers Digest, which is a channel focused on AI and development. What I'll do there is give me a nice little succinct prompt that I can take and copy. So now that I have our assistant instructions, I'll just read through them here. So you are a creative assistant for the YouTube channel, Developers Digest, focused on AI and software development. Your role is to research trending topics, generate compelling video titles, descriptions, and tags, suggest ideas for engaging thumbnails, and provide general advice to optimize the channel's content strategy, maintain a professional and informative tone tailored to developers and tech enthusiasts. That's the nice thing of leveraging a model itself to have a system prompt, because we can see here that it added some things that I didn't otherwise specify but can actually be quite helpful. Now, in terms of the model, you can access things like GPT-40, GPT-40 Mini, now, if you run it through the RunBear access, you will have a million tokens for free to start. And then if you just want to have it directly build through the platform, you'll be able to do it at the rate of whatever the OpenAI API is, as well as a 10% premium. But at any time, you can just turn this off. And all that you need is an OpenAI API key. 
and then it can route directly to OpenAI and you won't incur that additional cost. For now, let's just keep it easy as well as free. Next, you can add your content sources. If you want to add Google Drive, Confluence, Notion, or Slack itself, you can leverage all of these within the Assistant. Let's say you have some proprietary data. The nice thing with this is by leveraging these different platforms is you're able to have people control maybe particular documents, aspects of documents, or folders that don't even need to be technical. And all of these documents can be indexed to have that information ultimately retrieved and used within the context of the chatbot. That's one of the things that's really nice with the platform. There are a number of AI tools out there where oftentimes you almost have to be programmer adjacent to be able to use them. You can really get started without being technical at all. You don't have to worry about connecting different pieces and the business logic piece. You can just go and click, I wanna use Notion, specify which pieces within Notion that you want to leverage. So let's say for instance, I wanna leverage my to-do list. For instance, I can click to-do, it will go ahead, it will sync that. And depending on the length of what you have within the folder or the document or the knowledge source, it can take a little bit of time just to index it, but it generally speaking doesn't take too long. In terms of the action, these are like your tools that your assistant can leverage. So say if you want to pass in an image from a Slack message, you can use the image interpretation. Or if you want to have it generate an image for you, you can use the image generation. The current date can also be helpful where say in a Notion Kanban board, you could say, what are the most pressing things to work on today, for instance, that can be helpful. Web search can be helpful in terms of research, being able to directly fetch URLs as well, pretty self-explanatory. And then finally, you can reference the previous messages. If say in the event, you want to get the context of things that you had previously asked the assistant. Now there is also the option where you can add open API compatible specs here. If you do want to use external tools and APIs, you are able to do that and you can set that up all within here. Obviously this is slightly more technical. You can add in your own custom tools as well. In terms of some of the advanced options, there is also a code interpreter as well. Say it's a data intensive task. You'll be able to generate things like graphs with this. The other nice thing with this is you can directly upload documents from Slack or Discord. Now, the great thing with this, if we just pause for a second, is if you think about this within the context of a team, a lot of teams are already within Slack. Slack is probably the second most used tool that I personally use, only second to my code editor throughout the day. I'm in there constantly talking to coworkers and what have you, and having something like this where you can collaborate as well as have an AI assistant built into a platform that you're already using, it goes without saying how it can be helpful. Well, if it's the first time you're using Slack, you do just have to grab a configuration token, which they do give very clear steps on how you can do that. And then from here, we can just go ahead and we can create. Once that's all set up, you can determine what channel you want to use. So let's say I want to install my YouTube Assistant 2.0 to the Developer's Digest demo channel that I have set up here. Similar to Discord, get the permissions that you need to enable all of this. We'll go ahead and we'll allow this. And then once that's done, we now see that we have our app here. We have YouTube Assistant 2.0. You can begin to interact with it. If I just say, hello world. Now, in this case, I'm directly interacting with it as if it was a person, but you can also interact with it in a number of different ways. Here we see the reply, but let's just go back for a moment. But you can specify to have the AI assistant across all channels, just like you see in the demo. That's what it's going to default to but you can also just set it up to be able to have direct messages to it as well. Or alternatively, you can specify that you only want to have it in certain channels. Let's just say in this case, I only want to have it within the social channel. Well, I'll go ahead and I'll create that. From there, there are a number of different options. Personally, I like being able to mention things, mention the tool here. In terms of accessing the AI automation, you can just add the automation within that channel now. You can also have it trigger on replies, and there are a number of other settings here in terms of how you actually want to trigger the bot. From there, you can specify everything from the image icon, whether you want to hide annotations or not, whether you want to include the username in that request, and a handful of other things. Now within our social channel, I'm going to give it a message of do an internet search for information about model context protocol from Anthropic and give a summary. I'll go ahead and I'll send that through. Now, if it's the first time that you're using the assistant from the particular channel, if you've limited it to a channel, you do just have to make sure that you do invite the assistant to that channel. So it has access to be able to interact with it. And then here we see the response streaming in. 
and we have a bulleted answer. The Model Context Protocol, or MCP, was introduced by Anthropic. It's an open source standard designed to improve the integration of AI assistance with various data sources. So the great thing with this is if you were just to use a model like GPT-40 or Sonnet 3.5, you would have to add in that capability yourself to be able to search the internet, right? Because all of those models are trained with a lag of data. So being able to reference information, in this case, something that just happened a number of days ago, it obviously can be very helpful. That's the great thing with having this within Slack or Discord, where you could just be within a channel of your community or within your workplace, and you can ask what other people think about it. You could ask a coworker, what do you think about this? Do you think this is a good thumbnail? Do you think this is a good title? Do you think this is a good strategy? Whatever the assistant is designed to do, you're all of a sudden able to have it within tools that you're already using and be able to collaborate without having to adopt a new platform at all. It's already within what you're already using. Let's go through some of the other capabilities. For instance, we did enable image generation. In this case, it's going to generate images from Dolly. Let's say I'm in the process of making a video and I want now to work on the thumbnail. What I could do within here, I can have it all within a thread and I can ask, I am making a YouTube video about this. Now let's generate a relevant image. Within the thread, it has the context of all that we already discussed. And then here is the image that it generated that I could go and I could reach for and use within my thumbnail creation. So another nice thing with this is you can actually upload files as well. Say if you have a PDF of whatever it might be, maybe a slide deck or something. In my case, what I do with every video is I generate a YouTube description based on the transcript of the video. So here for demonstration's sake, I have a PDF of what that transcription is. So if I just say, generate a description, five title ideas, as well as 10 comma separated tags for my video. Here we see the transcript of everything that was within my video on model context protocol that I had from a handful of days ago. And then here we go. So here are our video ideas unlocking AI potential, how the model context protocol is changing integration. I have my five video ideas. I, I have the description as well. And then I also have relevant tags within here. I basically have done from the research of things that I could reference within notes as I'm going through the video, all, all the way through to even generating images that I could use as a part of my thumbnail design process. And then finally, you can even upload documents and you can see how in this context, how it can be relevant for someone like me. Last, I'm just gonna show you how you can leverage other tools and knowledge sources. Let's say for instance, I wanna leverage information that I have within Confluence. I can create another chatbot called Confluence Chatbot, and I'm gonna to specify to answer questions I have about the information that is within Confluence. But we'll just take a moment to index everything. And then once that's all done, I'm gonna to specify to leverage the current date, because it could be useful to ask about due dates and stuff like that. Then just like before, once you have another chatbot, and now I should be able to ask questions about my task list. So I can say, what is on my task list? And then there we go. Review your team's project plan, kick off the brainstorming session, organize weekly meetings. If I go over to Confluence here on my task list, I see review your team's plan, kick off brainstorming, organize weekly meetings. Now, the other nice thing with this is you do also see the reference of where all that information is coming from. So you do have that annotation for the source just to confirm that it is valid and all of that. It's as easy as I showed you within this video to get started. You can leverage all of the different platforms. I'm sure that if you try this out, you'll definitely be able to find a use case that you will be able to leverage, whether it's for a personal or professional use case. But otherwise, that's pretty much it for this video. If you found this video useful, please like, comment, share, and subscribe. Otherwise, until the next one.